Alrighty, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. I'm back with another StarCraft 2 1 versus 1 bot AI cast. We have got ourselves what should be a good one here today. And frankly, I don't know what I'm getting myself into with this one. As we've got two incredible bots, a Protoss versus Terran. And it's kind of the two late game bots that we have here today. It's uh, it's the turtle, the turtle king, Ketrox bot. However, it's been really changing its name, at least as far as my opinion's concerned, in that it doesn't just sit back and turtle boringly most of the time. It's always got that great banshee harassment and stuff going on. And then taking on Ketrox bot is going to be another late game bot. It is Shark bot, the top ranked Protoss bot which is no small achievement. So a PVT, more importantly, a bot versus bot, and one that I'm fairly sure will go at least to the mid to the late game. So ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy this one, make sure to go ahead, slap that like button, like it owes you money. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can click that bell icon, and then join the Discord, which is linked down below. Or consider becoming a YouTube member if you want to support the channel. We've got a bit of probe harassment going on down here. Oh, is it actually going to kill the SCV? Yes, it is. The probe out for blood. That's a bit of a pain for Ketrock. And we, yeah, uh, leave a comment as well. I almost forgot that one. More bots. Shout it out in the comments down below. Scream it in the comments down below as uh, that goes a long way to uh, helping with the YouTube bot which is another bot on its own. That, 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 that's my bot opponent, anyway. So, we've got this probe actually being a massive nuisance for Sharkbot. However, the Marine will come out and say, get away from my boys, as that probe has no choice but to retreat. We've got the t one gate into Robo for Sharkbot. Both these bots getting up a bit of tech before they go for their expansion. I'm Fairly confident they both will eventually go for an expansion. The probe comes in and then has to run away. The marine loads up into that bunker. That probe shall not make it past again. Uh, yeah. We see, like, Ketrox bot saying one base Banshee Cyclone. I feel like that tag's a little bit misleading after watching a few of its games. As, like, it does go one base gas and then fact double factory starport. But the Banshee's pretty late for the most part. And then it does get up an expansion relatively soon. Not not like super quick or anything, but it, it does get one. It's not like it's one base all inning with Banshees and Cyclones or anything like that. We've got Sharkbot building up all its Chrono Boost here. This is, uh, this is one that makes me think. I guess it just saves it all to get that unit production online. It's then going to be getting up that Nexus at the natural base. So a little bit earlier expansion than Ketrox bot. We see Sharkbot saying, I only see one base. And right it is. How it saw that, I'm not too sure. I guess the probe kind of dove on in a little bit. Is it going to try and go on it again? Like, I feel like there's no way the probe got far enough to see that there was indeed no extra base. Yeah, this, uh, this probe doesn't know what it's talking about. There is another base on the way up. Sharkbot is getting up a warp prism on the way, and it's getting out of Robo Bay already, so I'm wondering, is this going to be like a Colossus or Disruptor harassment, potentially? Is this something the bot authors programmed, or is the prism just going to be like that safeguarding thing? Oh, is it, or is it going to do, do prism mining? I believe someone had uh, programmed a bot that did prism mining. Double Cyclones are on the way for Ketrox, so getting out those safety units with its with its signature Siege Tank Widow Mine. Very uh, good defensive composition. We've then got, got Gravitic Drive on the way for the Warp Prisms. Triple Starport going up, which is just nutty that it's going off, going for three Starports off of two gases right now. I don't even know how it was able to pull, pool that much gas together. Suppose uh, having the early gases definitely helps with that. And I, this is something that I'm not sure of. I, I guess probably not. I know that bots mine faster minerals with the, the speed mining. I do wonder, however, if... Like, I don't think they mine any quicker. The gas. I'm, I'm pretty confident of that because, like, you can have, like... 
four. You can have like four SUVs in a refinery and it doesn't go any faster because it's always just a second for the SUV to queue up. That's the bottleneck there. Colossus gets a Widow Mine and a couple of Marines, some really nice micro. Gonna drop it on top of that siege tank. And it's actually killing off a good amount of SCVs. Sharkbot even flexing, saying, Can you stop this? So far, Ketrox bot is having a having a hard stop. How does this Colossus already have 17 kills? It's just slaughtering SCVs. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. I have never seen Colossus harassment be so good. It's killing off the cyclones that are attacking the prison. The Colossus does go down the oh no. <laughs> and then Sharkbot saying that was some War of the World stuff. Oh my gosh. I feel like I did not pay enough attention to that. That's why I was like focused on the mining of the SCVs. But that, then that Colossus just kind of rolled up and massacred so many SCVs for Ket on Ketrock's side of the map. That is terrible. That is a big economic hit for a bot that's building a planetary at its natural, for a bot that invests in so much heavy tech. That's really going to hurt. We've got one Banshee out for Ketrox bot to potentially get some harassment done. However, there's Phoenix on the way for Shark bot. That will really help out with the defense. There's a third already up for the Protoss bot. And things are looking really good. We see Sharkbot saying, I lost zero of my dudes for zero of yours. I'm not sure what engagement that's referring to. But uh, that Colossus definitely went out like a legend. Two Cyclones and a Widow Mine. Five Marines and 18 SCVs. Those Stalkers at the Natural maybe killed a couple of the SCVs themselves. Uh, that, was, that was something, though. We see Ketrox saying, Enemy Protoss Stargate. Conditional Viking production started. Sharkbot saying it's easier to calculate passing for air units. These bots are a couple of, uh, of chatterboxes. We do have those observers out now, though, for Sharkbot, so I'm not too concerned about the Banshees for it. Phoenix, one of the best units in the game, if not the best unit in the game for dealing with Banshees. We've got triple turret production starting for Ketrox's bot to defend from any potential air harassment. However, that economic hit was so darn big. I don't think I've ever seen bot harassment be so darn effective. Like, that was huge. Sharkbot has a massive economic lead. We'll see if it uh, if it's able to keep that rolling, but it's already got out four immortals. It's getting cannons at its third. None at the natural or none at the main just yet to help with this potential banshee harassment coming down the line. And we do have an attack moving out for Ketrox spot, but there's four immortals. There's a bunch of phoenix. I'm not too concerned. We'll see if the Banshee harassment, probably Ketrox Spot's strongest player, one of them, is able to do too much about that. Cyclones getting lifted up, Immortals feel so much damage to them in single shots, they three-shot them. And we saw how much, how weak the current Cyclones are with uh, how fast that Colossus killed them too. We see a Stalker trying to warp in the main base to deal with this Banshee. There should be an Observer coming on in to help hunt this down, so... Banshee's getting shot down by those Phoenix. They still have that light unit tag, so those go down pretty darn quickly. Tempest are now being produced by Sharkbot. We've got a fourth Nexus on the way up, whereas Ketrox's bot is still only on two command centers. By this time, I feel like it's definitely thrown up an extra command center. It just threw away a good chunk of its units. And yeah, I'm a little bit concerned for Ketrox's bot at this point in the game. I, like, losing 18 SCVs, it doesn't matter if it's a bot game or not. That is huge early game damage. There's going to be a lot of pressure on the blue bot to get something done. Probably with Banshee Harassment, we see Sharkbot saving its pylon as uh, it's now going to have to deal with that pesky Banshee Harassment. However, those Banshees, they're getting hunted down thanks to the Observer that Sharkbot is doing a good job of bringing with it. We see the Cyclones are potentially going to kill a cannon, but no, in come the Phoenix, lift up those Cyclones. They will go down. The two tanks are here for Ketrox Bot. However, there's like six Immortals. That's a tank's worst nightmare. In go those Immortals walking right on up, getting on top of the siege tanks, so that is bad news bears for those tanks and the attack for Ketrox bot just not working out. It's investing in another Stargate, or another Starport, pardon me. Actually, two more Starports. Still no third base, however. The, like, the economic hiccup has been so huge. It just hit 400 minerals, so it finally queued up the extra command center, but this is so darn late. And... Out of between these two bots, I didn't expect that to happen. 
I, I, I think I've seen Sharkbot attempt the Colossus harassment before, but that just was so darn strong. Programming something like that is so cool that uh, the, the author took the time to program that strategy. And I know that Sharkbot has some machine learning elements to it, as far as how it picks its build and strategy, I think anyway. I'd be interested to know the depth of how uh, how much machine learning is used for it. We do see Ketrox bot planning to deal with the the air army though with a healthy Viking count, 10 Vikings, soon to be 11 and more on the way. There's already vehicle plating level two, so that will help out their armor. I'd love to see ship weapons for attack being researched, but of course Ketrox bot is very broke. We see all the upgrades getting researched for shark bot, a potential fifth base gonna be going up soon and it's almost maxed out, doubling the supply of its opponent. And the only question is going to be, does Sharkbot just sit back, or is it actually going to attack and go for a kill? This Stalker's hanging out. I wonder if it's blocking this Nexus. Nope, he moves out of the way. Good Stalker. An Oracle is now on the way for Revelation. A Mothership is on the way for Sharkbot. Like, all the tech. Look at that production tab. That is, that is a fatty production tab right there. Ketrox Bot is finally hitting its stride with its expansions, though. That's one of the things the bot does best. Getting up a third, getting up a fourth, and getting up a fifth all at the same time. And if it's left alone for a minute or two with those bases up, it will really start to come back in this game. I feel the Viking count is so darn huge for Ketrox bot. Definitely enough to one-shot down Colossus or Tempest. However, those Vikings just dive on in. That's another signature move of Ketrox bot, how the Vikings just charge in. Using the acceleration there is nuts, but the battery overcharge is big. And that actually seems to be messing with the AI a little bit of Shark bot as those Tempest were running away, not shooting. However, those Vikings did just all die. Ketrox bot having that Viking suicide plan, the Viking kamikaze plan almost, as uh, they just dive on in trying to get whatever they can. They killed a Tempest in a... no, just a Tempest. So it wasn't worth it. Diving on in over a battery overcharge. Not the play, evidently, unfortunately. I, I love to see that like the bot author's gone to the lengths to program that, though. That was just not the move, though, at this point in the game. We'll see if Sharkbot's going to give Ketrox Bot the time of day, though, or whether it will attack on in. That's going to be the question here. We see Ketrox Bot up to 85 SCVs, getting up more planetaries. The problem is, though, it's attacking on in with, like, two Cyclones against the Protoss late-game army. This is a, a little bit of everything. Well, maybe not everything. It's missing High Templar, Psy Storm. Uh, and disruptors, I suppose, but Colossus and Tempest are pretty darn good. We see lots more cannons going up, more Nexus going up for Sharkbot. We'll see just how many bases Sharkbot's going to end up with this game. Banshees running on into cannons in the middle of the map. We see the upgrades looking real good. Plus three ship weapons. Ketrox bot though, doing all right with the plus three armor and plus one ship weapons on the way now. And it's only behind 80, 90 supply or so. No, not even that much. Only 70. Pardon, pardon my maths. As uh, we see just more and more of those Vikings being produced. We'll have to check if there's going to be another potential Viking suicide for Ketrox Squad or not. More command centers are going up. And Sharkbot definitely could have won this game if it had that uh, killer's instinct. But that's one of the more difficult things to program in a bot. A bot can't magically know how far ahead or behind it is. That's why human players, they go for scans, they go for hallucinated scouts. And even then, human players, pro players, often make mistakes of underestimating how dead their opponent is. The Vikings are on the are on the edge for the Terran bot, getting some good shots off on the Phoenix. The Tempest really need to help deal with those Vikings. We see a time warp go down that affects the area units too. For so those of you that have been out of the scene for a long time, uh, I believe that was a patch that was made. And the Vikings, they did kill off a decent number of Phoenix, but quite a few more Vikings did perish. Ketrox bot, however, has taken all the bases on its side of the map, so it is going to be a late game versus late game. Like, these two bots could potentially end up mining out this map. And that's what I mean when I said I don't know what I'm getting myself into when I elected to cast these two. 
we'll have to keep a close eye on the efficiency of these two bots. As uh, efficiency is king, currently massive lead for Sharkbot, but if Ketruk's bot reaches that 200-200 supply, starts taking better fights, maybe it can win. We also see Sharkbot investing in a ridiculous amount of static defense, and that is big spending that could really affect it in the late game. As uh, that's uh, that's not looking too. That could, yeah, that could come back to bite it. I could see a situation where Sharkbot has no minerals in the late game, but 900 cannons. So we'll see, as it uh, does just keep throwing down more and more. We've got Banshees on the way for on absolute mass for Ketruk spot. so maybe those cannons aren't the worst idea in the world. We see Psystorm upgrade detected, <laughs> Sharkbot says. Oh, pardon me, I'm actually going to rewind for that one. I believe we had another Viking suicide from Ketruk spot. Uh... I think, anyway. We see, yeah, Kentrock's pod said Psystorm detected, so Sharkbot is getting all the tech, as it's got a multiple High Templar. High Templar, very good for anti-air. We see Kentrock's pod diving on in once again. Psystorm's getting dropped. Psystorm's galore just melting those Vikings, and oh man, Kentrock's Viking suicide strategy is questionable, I shall say. What did it kill there? Nothing, I think. Oh man, that was uh, that was a disaster. 37 Vikings have died, and the bot author's approach. I see how it works in certain situations, but it just doesn't seem to hold up when you're diving over shield batteries, photon cannons, and psi storm. As uh, that's a, that's a little bit of a predicament. Sharkbot slowly pushing out further and further. Ketrok's bot. Uh, yeah, in a, in a bit of a rough position. We do see the mass Banshee now starting to move out. There's siege tanks that could potentially push these, uh... Push these... Push this cannon line back. And there is, like, so many Banshees that have been made for Ketrok spot. There's 11. Five are hanging out back in the main base. I can't say why these Banshees are engaging these cannons. However, there is two batteries to help them on out. So, they're gonna trade out okay. We... See that battery overcharge? I love to see that. There's a tank helping out as well, but the Banshees, are, or the cannons are at least trading out with the Banshees, so they're doing their job. This is where casting the bot game gets hard though, as Cyclones are now out on the map working away on cannons. They can kill an unlimited number of cannons. We see a tag for feedback being used. I believe that was probably on a, on a Banshee. Sharkbot has had enough of this attack, gonna clean it up. The tanks die. The Tempest are getting good shots off on the Vikings. The Vikings are going to go for it again, though. Oh, no, what a slaughter it is. The, it just doesn't work over the static defenses. Oh, Ketrak Spot throws away all its Vikings again. I mean, uh, the Mothership's died and Oracle's died, but resources lost. Ketrak Spot has definitely been the one that that is dying. The Cyclones are even eating a couple cannon shots. That's not good. The cannon line is approaching the Nexus or the command center, pardon me, of Ketrok. And I think this is a slow death for the blue bot, as uh, the mass Viking style doesn't work against what Sharkbot has cooked up, I feel. It's now making ravens. Ketrok's bot was famously a late game bot with mass ravens for a while, so we'll see if that can do something here or not. Ravens are moving out. Will we see auto turrets drop down? What's the play for these boys? They they seem a little bit unsure of themselves, other than that they want to avoid those tempest shots. More and more banshees are being produced. There's currently nine nine at a time. As these banshees, they're gonna move forward. Catrack spot keeps trying to assail the northern location. These cannons, like it seems so over the top, but apparently it's not as the mass cannon strategy works out pretty darn well for Sharkbot. And yeah, I just don't see how a bot that's building Banshees on mass is going to beat Cannons and Tempest. And I think this may all come back down to how much early game damage Sharkbot got done to Ketrox spot. Like, kept, like, you like to say that, like, oh, your bot can play. You give it 10,000 resources, it'll make an army that can stand up to your opponent, but that's not a lot. That's not the case always. A lot of bots rely on getting early game harassment done. They rely on hitting specific timings. 
Uh, and, of course, Ketrak's bot was so far behind, like, the Banshee production was behind, so there wasn't any... The harassment was behind. Its Viking count was behind, so it was never able to get, like, those mid-game trades. I imagine against the Tempest, we see these Vikings flying on in here. How many cannons are on the map? Can we get a like for every cannon on the map, guys? That would be something. As there's currently 74 cannons and 52 shield batteries. Is there... It's their shield upgrades. Funnily enough, though, despite all these... All these Protoss structures, there is no shield upgrades for the Protoss bot. That is something. And Shark bot, despite trading out... 18,000 resources more efficient than Ketrox bot. It is, uh... It is... It has no mineral bank to speak of, pretty much, because it's just building more and more cannons. We see Ketrox bot gonna dive on in again. May get a couple Tempests this time, as the Protoss bot was under... was not really underneath too much static defense, so that was an okay trade. However, a Nexus did perish. And that's a big loss. Sharkbot is going to try and take this Nexus to potentially set up cannons next to it as well later on. Sharkbot gets pushed back a little bit though, so this Nexus may be a bit of a pipe dream. The Mass Raven for Ketrokbot. Starting to toss down auto turrets. Was I, did I call this game too early? Does Ketrokbot still stand a chance here? The resources lost are evening up a little bit. There's still a darn long way to go. We also see a medivac on the way, which I really don't understand, but okay. Uh, for, for Ketrox bot, we'll have to keep an eye on what this single medivac is going to do. Mass Ravens moving out, tossing down auto turrets. The auto turrets are free, so as long as the Ravens don't die, that shall be good. And maybe Sharkbot's uh, cannon spending habits will come back to bite it. We see the Vikings are going to dive once more. I think that was like 10 Vikings for a single Tempest for Ketrok's bot, but at least it got a single Tempest, right? <laughs> right? Shields are now on the way. I suppose Shields 1 was already researched. I must have missed it, but that will actually help out big time with the cannons and whatnot. This Nexus is being established. We'll see if we can get up some cannons and batteries next to it to keep this thing alive. And if Sharkbot can actually mine from it, that would be really big. Ketrox bot is mining like a madman with the mass mules. This, this is one of the more goofy late games I've cast, that's for sure. Between these bots. At least it's entertaining though, I shall say that. So entertaining, I actually forgot I had a, had a little bit of coffee left. We see the Tempest getting shots off, actually killing some of those air units of Ketrox bot. This Nexus is established. Probes are trying to mine from it. It's a high-risk venture for Sharkbot. We see Psy Storms go down. The Vikings try and target down the Mothership. That's not going to happen, though, as, uh, yeah, the Psy Storm Mothership... Tempest combo is just so darn strong. Ketrox bot has got all the ravens. And I think it's got a raven suicide strategy plan too. To like potentially build up max energy and then commit with mass auto turrets. We'll see if a play like that happens. It tosses down six or seven auto turrets to kill a single probe. That poor probe. We see Ketrox bot saying that's my base. As it drops down a gajillion mules saying, no, 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 that's my money. I will take it. Or at least take what I can from it. And Sharkbot has got less of a mineral bank than Ketrok's bot. Like, the cannon expenditure is out of hand. Someone someone needs to do an audit on what Sharkbot's been building. Which is 90 photon cannons at this point in the game. I don't even know how many have died. 23 have perished. Sharkbot is starting to gain ground against Ketrox bot. Looks like the main bottleneck for Ketrox bot is gas, which isn't surprising as it's got 18 ravens and it's throwing Vikings away like they're free. Does suicide a bunch of Vikings to get the mothership. This planetary is being repaired. The problem is there is still a very formidable ground army. Psystorm galore. Ketrox bot going to lose a big chunk of its mining. And Sh Sharkbot is mining successfully from this nexus.
Uh, yeah. Yeah, the lack of the gas hit that Ketrox bot took from losing those geysers is pretty darn big, I think. It's still got at least six functional ones, however. But at the rate it's throwing away Vikings, I'm gonna guess at least 100 Vikings have died this game. 91! Okay, almost. Which is an absurd amount for a unit that costs as much as the Viking. Resources lost, Ketrox bot is so far behind. Uh, and yeah, the Vikings can try and trade out with this. As Sharkbot is not underneath cannons, there's a chance the engagements definitely go better. We see mass feedback going down on the Raven, though. That's really problematic. The reduced damage was a massive buff. Or a massive nerf on the High Templar back in the day. To stop them just killing Ravens. But Ketrox bot really starved on the energy there from those Ravens. Mass feedback hits the Banshees, forces them to retreat. Vikings commit on in. They do not get anything done. Sharkbot now taking the Nexus. And so it turns out Sharkbot is able to afford mass cannons and batteries, as long as it just keeps taking Ketrox bot's bases. That's the moral of the story. As uh, we see... Yeah, Ketrox bot just running out of steam here. I think this game is over at this point. It looked like it was getting a little closer. If Ketrix Bot was able to keep on holding on to that base, I'd say maybe there was a chance. But uh, it's looking like a bit much. Now, those were some good auto turrets killing off the Immortals. The problem is the Immortals are not the main threat. Sharkbot mining happily from Ketrok's base. Stalker's trying to harass this planetary fortress. Uh, I don't think you guys can take that down. And, uh, yeah. This is, this is a game, that's for sure. If you guys want to see a rematch between these two, make sure to leave a comment down below. See who, uh... See which, uh, it, whether Ketrox bot stands a better chance if it doesn't take so much harassment damage. I think I may do that. In the past, I wouldn't be caught dead casting a Ketrock Bot late game match, but they're so much more entertaining than they used to be. Or at least than a couple of them that I cast. We see Ketrock Bot dropping the mass mules, saying, That's my money, darn it. But it doesn't really need minerals, it needs gas. And with losing yet another planetary, it's only got. It, actually, it's got zero gas income. That is it. No gas. Ketrock Bot even letting us know that it is broke, and so it begins building. A single marine <laughs> and uh, a slow death for this one I think I'm gonna fast forward a little bit Viking suicide once more they almost they do actually get the mothership but that's like once again ten Vikings to kill the mothership that's uh, oh man how am I forgetting the name of the movie where the aliens blow up the White House and then everyone suicides with their F-16s or whatever. Oh my gosh, how am I forgetting the name of that movie? Someone please let me know the name of that movie. Independence Day, there we go. Okay, <laughs> that's some Independence Day level shit from Ketrox Vikings. As uh, unfortunately the aliens win in this venture. And uh, yeah, that is unfortunately going to be it. The auto turret play is really cool from the Ravens. And, yeah, I might have to cast a rematch between these two, or another match, just to see if Ketrox bot does any better, if the Colossus harassment doesn't deal so much damage early on, as StarCraft 2, the early game, compounds into the late game so often. And if you guys want to support these 30-minute casts, consider becoming a YouTube member. There's various perks you can check out there. Subscribe if you haven't already. Join the Discord, which is linked down below. You can also check out the ProBots uh, ES Champ website, or just search ProBots. Check out their YouTube channel, as they're a big reason why the botting community is as good as it is. So uh, go check them out. They're doing another season where all these bots play in a tournament format, which is very cool. And I'll admit I've started following that a little bit more than I used to. The mothership. How many motherships died? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. It's such a big death tab. Three motherships died. 
five Tempest, but ultimately 116 Vikings and too much stuff for Ketrox bot. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for tuning in.